How are we looking participants wise, Quayle? Okay, did you go ahead and get started? Yeah, we're only missing about two now, so it's okay. All right, sounds good. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this session. It is called, um, the title of it is Advanced Canvas Formatting Using Design Plus. I believe I know everybody on the call, but for those who I haven't had the pleasure of meeting, my name is John Glevy. I'm the coordinator of distance learning here, and I'm joined by Quayle Snowden, the senior instructional designer. Um, kind of a shameless plug that we always like to remind folks, especially as things are starting to heat up as we prepare for summer too and already looking ahead for the fall. Don't forget, if you ever need immediate Canvas help, please feel free to reach out to the help desk where Crayley and I are able to pull your ticket. Or if it's after hours or say on the weekend or kind of like this weekend when we're swinging into a holiday weekend, don't forget you also have access to Canvas's 24 seven support through Instructure themselves. Instructure is the company that makes Canvas. So please don't ever forget about that. So let's talk about City Labs. You'll hear a lot of you have heard this kind of company or tool names before. What City Labs is, so City Labs is actually a company that has four different products that are helping faculty across the country in instructional support design and in the classroom. It was founded by a group of folks headed up by, uh, by this guy called in, by the name of Ken Larson from Utah State University. City. And he is also joined by a couple of folks who actually used to work at Canvas. Kenneth is still working at Utah State University as a lead instructional designer. The company has grown where they have, like I had said, four full products out there now. Ryder owns this product called Design Plus, or sometimes you might hear us called Design Tools. That was the previous name of it. And what's really neat about Design Plus is it has three distinct parts right within the tool. Something called the, that we refer to as the content editor, a upload and embedding of an image tool, which we'll demo today, and this really cool add-on called the multi-tool, which we'll talk about at the end of this session that really makes it easy to start up your Canvas class in the beginning of the semester and build it out. So what we're gonna be covering today, because like you'll see in a few minutes, this tool is truly, truly robust. There are still times, and Quayle and I have been using it for well over a year and a half now, that we will even be going back and forth showing each other tips and tricks that we never even knew were in there. So rather than try and cover everything in a very short session, we're really gonna focus on kind of the four most important topics that we feel faculty end up will like to utilize. That's applying these template pages that we have already created and ready to go for you using one of those template pages called uh, as the syllabus page, which is probably, if you were to walk away here with one activity to be able to go ahead and try and play, for you, play around with yourself later today, it's definitely that syllabus page, and we'll be talking a lot about that. How you can do some other advanced formatting within content pages in Canvas, as well as using the multi-tool. So like I mentioned, the TLC has already created a few different types of template pages for faculty to be able to utilize. They are as follows, the syllabus page, what we call overview pages, module overviews, which we'll show, weekly readings and lectures pages. If you have, say, a lot of videos that you require students to watch, we have a dedicated page you could utilize for that, an assignment page, as well as a discussion page and a quiz page. Just to kind of preview what we mean by what we say templates, Here's an example of the module overview page. If you are somebody who's using the module structure already and you like to kind of have either a welcome video to the week or maybe a welcome announcement where you cover a lot of topics, you can also do that via a content page, which we'll show you later. And here's an example of what the page will actually look like. And you can see just objectives, readings and learning activities, all of this you can change around and, and mix it up to fit your needs. The readings and lecture page, Pretty basic, but still looks very good. An assignment page, you can see nothing actually changes the functionality of Canvas. We just have some of these headers and pre-built guidelines for you. Same thing with the discussion board. And quiz, and again, nothing changing with the functionality of Canvas, just pre-built templates that kind of set the stage and make it very easy for you to edit a page without having to spend that much time formatting it. So we're gonna go ahead and start diving into the demo in a second, but one of the things I wanna show you first that I will demo, but, and we can make these slides available afterwards, that way it's easy for you to be able to see some of this. But if you notice for about a, or a little over a year now, whenever you're going to edit a page within Canvas, this little rocket ship kind of appears in the top right hand corner very quickly. 
And by clicking on that rocket ship, that's how we design, excuse me, that's how we open Design Plus or Design Tools. And Design Tools, the content editor, is gonna be this little slide out tray here. And so the first activity we're gonna demo is how do you pull in a template page? And we're gonna be talking a lot about those template pages in a minute. And so again, just so you can see in a very basic kind of clean screenshot, when we're pulling in template pages, there's different tools and buttons that we have to utilize here. We're creating content and editing that content. So we're gonna go ahead and stick with that first drop down for create and edit content. And you can see we have a few different choices. Everything we're talking about today is gonna to be from this institutional templates drop down box. And you'll see from there, we can pull and say something called the overview template if we wanted to. And then voila, that's all we have to do to get a brand new piece of content to come in. So let's go ahead and pivot over to our demo for today. Like I said, we're really gonna be focusing on the syllabus page when we're talking about the content editor. And so we'll talk about how we can change themes, moving some of these content, what we call content blocks around, and then playing with some more advanced tools like accordions, tabs, and then uploading images. So let me go ahead and start doing a new share. Is everyone seeing Canvas now? Perfect, okie doke. So let's pretend like we're in a brand new empty co uh, course shell in Canvas for the semester, similar to how what you're gonna, what you normally experience when you're going in. Just trying to find my mouse now. <laughs> All right, here we go. So like I said, let's talk about the syllabus page. So we'll go ahead and go into syllabus and we have our blank page. So let's go ahead and click on edit. And then by clicking on the little rocket ship, we have design tools opened up. Design tools has different layers or, or different settings basically where you have basic users, intermediate users and advanced users. The topics we'll be covering in this session today since this is advanced formatting within Canvas are going to make, require us to enable the advanced settings within Design Plus. To enable it to the advanced settings, we'll go ahead and click on these little gears icon in the top right hand corner. Like I mentioned by default, it's going to be set to basic for everyone. I'm going to go ahead and click on advanced. That way it automatically turns on all of my advanced settings. And at the top, I have this other toggle called automatically launch tools. And what this will do is alleviate the need for me to click on that little rocket ship every time if I wanted to. So it's not a requirement, but I'm going to go ahead and turn that on for today's session, just because it's a little bit easier. And excuse me, let me turn my notifications off so you don't get distracted by those. And I'll exit out of that. Okay, so we're back to our syllabus page. Like I said, to make things a lot easier and rather than start from scratch with all of our advanced formatting, I'm going to go ahead and pull in our template page that we already have pre-built for you for the syllabus. So to achieve this, like I mentioned before, we're going to go into create edit syllabus content. And now we're going to go down to copy existing content. Because like I said, we already have that template pre-existing for you to utilize. And now, like I had mentioned, we're going to be sticking with institutional templates for today. And I will pull in the one that's here, rider syllabus template. And just like that, we have all this content that gets pre-populated for instructors to utilize. Almost everything faculty members are able to change here, and that's what we're gonna be talking about next. How do you actually start changing and rearranging some of this content? But we really try to make it, this. we do make this template tailored after best practices, both based off of the Quality Matters rubrics as well as the Online Learning Consortium. And so you'll see very common headings, uh, especially if you're in, the, from the, the Norm Bratzi College of Business, the headings are actually verbatim of the headings from the online, temp the, excuse me, the online syllabus template that was APC approved, just because to make things a little bit consistent. So course description, and we explain how you can go right to the academic catalog and pull your description in, things like prereqs, course objectives, course requirements, like the, excuse me, like the textbook, 
what internet and Canvas access will be required, so on and so forth. Nothing special, nothing unusual, just something that I'm sure almost everybody is already including. What is your grading policy and schema, and so on and so forth. Before we start talking about how do we actually change content and move it around, I want to talk about this bottom section called Institutional Policies and Procedures. If we notice when I'm hovering over this, we have this little, this little flag in the top left-hand corner of this content block that says policy content locked. What this means is the one piece that you cannot actually change within this template is this bottom institutional policies and procedures. And the reason being is this is actually a piece of information that Quayley and I and He Young are actually able to control for everybody on the back end of Canvas. And what's nice about this is there's nothing special in here, other, um, or I should say nothing unique. It's all of the content that faculty are already encouraged to add, and in some cases required, such as the academic accommodations policy at the university, information for the academic success center, academic integrity, as well as online communication guidelines, like the, the writer emails, official policy, professional conduct, preferred name, so on and so forth. The reason that this content is locked is because, like I mentioned, it's actually maintained on the back end. So anytime, say, an office updates its name, so for those who remember just this past year, disability service, excuse me, um, student accessibility and support services was renamed to that office as well as the email changing. A couple of years ago, same thing with the Academic Success Center, their email had changed. And rather than faculty have to remember and to make all those updates across their syllabi, we're able to push those updates out automatically. You could always remove this content entirely if you did not want that feature, but we actually end up tending to find that faculty find it as a good convenience to not have to worry about that. So I'm gonna scroll back up to the top and let's talk about kind of the first step before we even start editing the content. What if we just wanted to rearrange some of the, the basic information? So. I'm going to pick on a really small example, but it's a great one for our needs. Instead of course description being at the top, I would like these course requirements to be at the top. That way it's kind of front and center for folks. So like I said, like I started mentioning, and I should have explained a little bit more, I keep using this phrase called content blocks. And that's just the phrasing that we use. If you see how all these headers are, as well as these blue double lines going around all of the content, that's what we refer to as a content block. And we block or chunk all of our information into these blocks by header or by, con excuse me, by um, theme or task. So what's nice about using Design Plus, instead of having to kind of highlight and then copy and paste things and move it around, kind of like how you would have to in a Word document, we're able to actually rearrange content blocks. So again, using our design tools or our design plus slide outs right here, rather than, okay, I don't want to copy existing content this time. I actually want to rearrange the blocks. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And if we notice, we have all of our headers here. So course description, course objectives, course requirements, so on and so forth. And if you notice, as I hover my cursor over the different titles here, on the left hand side, it's actually going to highlight the section that I'm currently looking at. That way it makes it crystal clear what I'm about to edit. So like I mentioned, I want course requirements to be on top of the course description ones. So by clicking and dragging these little arrows on the left hand side, I'm actually able to move the entire block of content up or down. So let's look at what happened. I scroll up to the top of the page, and now I have my course requirements right at the top, front and center. Any questions utilizing the chat on the, at the bottom or at the top um, of your Zoom page of what we just covered with moving big blocks of content around? Cool. Okay, so we moved it around, but okay, we actually didn't do anything, right? How do we edit that content? And what's super cool about all of this is you actually really don't need to know that much more than to go ahead and start making your own edits. Nothing else has changed using the rich content editor, really. So 
instead of my textbook being this one, all I would have to do, say I'm not offering that, that say the publisher is no longer offering this hard copy, it's only gonna be the ebook. I can just go ahead, highlight the text, delete it. I could expand my information here. Again, if this information that was a part of the template originally isn't pertinent to me, I can just go ahead and backspace all of that. So John, there's a question as, can you undo in the content editor? <laughs> so Carrie, it depends where you are in that uh, trying to undo process. Uh, no matter where you are within Canvas, if you're on a PC, you can always do Control Z. On a Mac, it's Command Z, and I'll do that right here, where I can undo the two changes that I just made. And then similarity, Shift Control Z to go, uh, to go forward. The only thing, once you click on save, you can no longer undo any of your previous steps. Does that make sense? And like I said, this is the same, that, uh, anytime you have content editing, so you're doing an announcement, you're doing a discussion board, quiz, you can always do that command Z or that control Z type of that task up until you click save. And I apologize if I'm ever looking down, kind of just making notes. Like I said, this is a pretty dense session. So Quayle and I are actually literally going off of an old school checklist, believe it or not, that we have printed on our desk to make sure that we're keeping on track with all of you guys, um, just because we don't want to go down any rabbit holes that we'd, um, to confuse anyone. So speaking of save, I am OCD, whether it be in Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, or in Canvas, about saving my work as I'm going, just because Murphy's Law, I completely believe in that as soon as you make a lot of progress on something and you're really happy with it, all of a sudden it gets erased just because you're having a bad day, right? So since I just made a few changes, I made a couple of big changes. I moved around that content block. I deleted my textbook information. Let's go ahead and click on Update Syllabus or the Save button at the bottom. That way I can check out and see how things look. Okay, and I can see that block got moved up for course requirements at the top. I'm happy with that. Perfect. So if I look in course requirements, let's pick the, on this a little bit more. If I notice, I have these different types of interactive, what we call accordions, or excuse me, expanders. And that, what that means is when I click on one of these sections, there's actually more information right within there. And this is really nice uh, within any con internet page, not let alone just within Canvas. And I'm sure you've seen similar types of functionality across the internet where there's a lot of information about a topic, but all that information might not always be pertinent to the user. So rather than having a really, really long syllabus where you have to keep scrolling, we can actually kind of hide some of those content pages, some of those pieces of content until the user wants to click on them and see them. And so what we're going to do next is show you how to change anything that's currently here, as well as create a new piece of rich content, such as an accordion or a tab. So let's go back into edit. I'm going to scroll down a bit here. And let's say, okay, these four look good so far, but there's one other piece of requirement that's going to be required. Um, Corelli, can you think of anything good that would be to maybe in an example class? Seriously. <laughs> I meant to come up with an example before. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's pretend what we have a Porto internet access. Let's, let's say we're talking about a lab. Um, I'm teaching a lab course and there's going to be different lab requirements for this course. And I want that to be covered in course requirements. So I want to add one of these other sections. To do this, let's go ahead and go into add advanced elements in our design plus light out tray. And as a reminder, if you did not already enable the automatically launch design plus on start, we would have to go ahead and click on that rocket ship and then bring it up. So I'll go into add advanced elements and we'll go into accordions and tabs. 
And we'll see my four sections are here right now. If for some reason those were not appearing, sometimes if you notice they just went away even though I'm looking at them, Design Plus is gonna be looking for where my cursor is on any elements or any pieces of information to add. So I just have to make sure that my cursor is in the section that I'm trying to change around. Okay, so like I had mentioned, I wanna add a fifth section here called Lab Requirements. So let's go ahead and what we're, we're gonna do is click on the Add Panel button here and we'll notice Panel Heading and Panel Content has been added. I can change the header right here on Design Plus. And we see as I'm making the changes here, the title is getting updated as well. And we'll just put some filler text here that I can go back and add later. But lab requirements is really important, almost as important as the textbook. So I want that to be forefront. And if we notice, similar to adding and rearranging syllabus content, we have these little arrows going up and down. I can go ahead and just drag that right to where I want it to be. And automatically, the, content, the syllabus page is going to get updated. Like I had mentioned, there's different types of these little advanced interactive types of pieces you can add. What we had here was an expander. You can also do something called tabs, and I can change that by clicking on, if I notice again in my accordions and tab sections, I have this type here. I can go ahead and change it to tabs. And while nothing changed here in the editor, let's take a look at what happens when I go ahead and click on update syllabus. And now instead of having all of those different kind of labels, I just have different tabs here that are getting updated, or excuse me, that are showing as I click around. Again, nothing really changes in the functionality. It's truly a look and feel. But as you start to play around with this a little bit more in your classes, you'll tend to find that, more, that you'll have different applications or you like the way something looks versus others. Any questions on accordions, tabs, and expanders? There looks like there's something along here. Uh, oh no, that was you, Quayley. Okie doke. So if we notice right here at the top, something I kind of skimmed over, we have this, con th this little piece of content, name, title, email address, where it quite clearly is showing, this is maybe where we wanna put our instructor contact information. What Design Plus calls this is adding teacher slash TA details. And while we don't utilize TAs at Rider, that's just a part of the functionality of how they can pull from. So let's go ahead and go on, click on the edit button. And what's really neat is Design Plus actually makes it super cool where we can just update, update this information once. And if we wanted to have my, con, my instructor contact information across different pages, we can go ahead and apply them to all those different pages. So rather than update the information right here, I'm actually gonna erase everything that's here right now, just because that's filler text, like I mentioned. Instead, we're going to go back into ad add advanced elements. And then the bottom section, teacher and TA details. And right now we have three instructors in this course. Let's pretend, let's pick on Qualey for a minute and say we're going to add her information. What we notice get populated automatically are going to be four pieces. The instructor's profile picture, their title, Everything by default is going to show this label called teacher because that is what your title is in the Canvas roster. I know it's not pulling your formal academic title. It's also not even pulling the word instructor. It's always going to pull teacher by default, but we can go ahead and change that. The bottom three are going to be optional fields that you can go ahead and, and add. So let's go ahead and say department. I kind of want that just to be my office number. So we'll put science. 3 -0. I actually don't remember what Kayla's office number is for. Let's pretend it is. And then let's go ahead and do office hours. And I want my office hours to be from on Tuesdays. 
and Thursdays, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. I'm gonna go ahead and omit phone number just because I'm not gonna elect for that to be my primary method of communication here for students. And you can go ahead and update your, your title there as well. We have two options here, insert as content block and insert details at cursor. Like I was mentioning before, Canvas organizes, excuse me, Design Plus organizes pieces of information as big content blocks. So I could go ahead and choose to insert that as an entire block, or as you're manipulating different other pieces of information, you can do this thing called insert details at cursor. And what that would do is wherever your cursor is on the page, it's going to stick that information right then and there. Because if we do as a block, it might be moving around. So for this example, I'm going to go ahead and just do insert details at cursor. And look at that, everything automatically got updated. We didn't have to play with formatting. Quaily's picture got formatted in, in a really nice circle with a border going around. If we wanted to, we could always change that down the road in a more advanced set session, but we'll go ahead and leave it. And as just a quick reminder and side note, the profile picture that's being pulled from is going to be pulling from either your university security card ID or your official university headshot that was taken by Pete Borg. That way, if you were to get that updated, your pages would also get updated as well. So we just did a pretty big change. I'm gonna go ahead and click on save again, just so I don't lose any of my content. And it looks good. It's still interacting the way that everything looks like the way I want it to. Any questions on what we just covered there? Looking good, Crowley? I see a nodding head, beautiful. Well, so like I mentioned before, there's three main things that we're talking about with Design Plus today. We have the content editing, which is all of what we've been doing, pulling in those template pages, which is how we started today, as well as this thing called an upload and embed, an upload and embed image tool. And while I'm sure everybody's uploaded a picture at some point in their Canvas page, City Design Plus actually has this really cool, a little bit more of enhanced method of being able to upload and embed a picture. So let's say I wanna have a small picture kind of over here on the right-hand side under my course description that's appropriate for the course. So let's go ahead and go click on the edit button. And I'll scroll down to my course description and we'll go into that section. Now, if we notice at the top, we still have our, our normal ribbon within the rich content editor. And we also have this blue one. When I hover over it, it says upload slash embed image. If this blue image, this blue, I should say blue icon was to never appear, just look for the little down arrow or the down carrot and you should have that there as well. Sometimes just like Ilamir, the Ilamir button gets hidden if you've ever experienced that before. So I wanna go ahead and I'll click on that upload and embed image button. And we have this little pop-up box. Now I don't have a dumb, an example picture for our course that doesn't exist here today, but let's just go ahead and choose an image that happens to be on my desktop, which if you know me pretty well, won't come to you as a surprise whatsoever that, if I can even find it, desktop, that I happen to have a picture of my dog laying around. So let's go ahead and open that up. And there we have Molly. Now what's really nice about this new uploading embedding image option is I can actually crop my image right within the canvas uploading. I don't have to have an image pre-cropped or preset to the aspect ratio that I want in order to have it upload. In fact, if you really wanted to get specific, you could actually choose a pre-populated aspect ratio. So if I wanna have an exact square, I can go ahead and click on that one-to-one -one aspect ratio. And well, that wasn't a good example. Let's say I had a really small one. It would put it, put it to that perfect square. So I'll go ahead and size this up. Once I'm ready, I can go ahead and click on crop and resize image. Yes, Matthew, you can drag and drop an image into that box. And let's just say Molly, Syllabus is going to be the file name. 
and I can either choose to upload and embed the image right to where I'm currently at, or I could actually just go ahead and upload it into Canvas and utilize down the road. And if this, for whatever reason, seems to be an attractive option to you to be able to edit an, an image on the fly very quickly and easily to a specific size, you could actually just download this image right away to your desktop. If you don't know anything what I just said about there, don't worry. Just go ahead and stick with upload and embed image. Okay, whoa. Well, we have Molly there, but she's a rather a little bit overwhelming here. So I don't want to be that big. What's really nice, and I know we haven't really dove into, dove into any of these additional buttons here, but there's so much more that we can do with Design Plus, including very easily resize images. And so if I was just to do a single click, of a normal left click right on the image and highlight it, I can go ahead and I want to customize this image, or in this case, what's called customize the style. And we'll do the current element style. And if we notice, we have this image size, position, and style that's popping up since I have it clicked on already. And so I don't need it to be quite this big. And uh, the image size, the width and height, it's going to be showing you is in pixels. Let's say I want that to be, let's try 250. Once I put the 250 in for the weight, the height dynamically updated to maintain my aspect ratio. In other words, it's not going to move it to like skinny it up. It's going to make it so it's an exact still same size, excuse me, still same kind of cropping without squeezing it or expanding it abnormally. That's still a little bit much. Let's try 170. Woo. Let's try backspace and that will do 175. Okay, that's a little bit better. But, but I'm really not happy with it on the left side. I kind of just want it as a complement image on the right. And if we look, we have image alignment here. Right now, there's not an alignment set. We see some these ugh, what am I trying to say? Familiar kind of icons. If you use Microsoft Word or Google Docs, left, left adjust, center adjust, and right adjust. I'll go ahead and right adjust this. That no, one have it question if you can use the corners to resize as well. Yes, you can. Um, I tend to find that it can be a little bit funky sometimes when you're doing that. Um, so I prefer to kind of be a little bit more OCD and set it over here on the right, but you can do that. You're more than welcome to. So I have my image in the area that I like, but I could get even a little bit more fancier. And by using these pre-populated image styles here, I can actually very quickly and easily make it into a circle image. I could even put a border around the image as well if I want to make it a little bit cleaner and round the edges or something like that. I'll go ahead, I put the, I'll put the border on with the drop shadow that way. I like the way that that looks. Okay, I'm happy and satisfied with that. Let's go ahead and click on save and see what it looks like in real life now. Perfect, looks good and I'm happy with it. You can do a lot with pictures in Canvas, or excuse me, a lot with pictures in any type of learning, right? And so having this upload and embed tool that really allows you to do things like crop the image and very easily resize and reposition, we have found has been super valuable, especially in the sciences when you're trying to put these diagrams up. But it's always very difficult to use images within HTML editors. And so Design Plus does a great job in allowing you to make those manipulations in a little bit more of a friendlier way. Any questions on play on uploading and messing around with those images like we just did here? All righty then. And we're doing pretty good on time. Look at that, Quayle. So let's take a break from editing content for a minute. And this is going to seem completely off the cuff, but one of the other areas that we would like to bring your attention to in Design Plus is actually something that the company City Labs built just for Rider. And they ended up really liking the idea that we came up with and rolled it out to all of their clients. And that's this thing called student cards. And so this actually might not be a great example. I'm trying to think of how many students in the sandbox right now. Okay, we do. Perfect. This looks a lot better when we're looking at maybe like a group of 30 students. But if you've ever gone into your student roster page and you've noticed last year, 
OIT made it so all of the student ID pictures are now showing up within Canvas. The problem is they're really, really small. And even if I zoom in, still not great for necessarily being able to differentiate students. Instead, what we can do, if you haven't noticed this already, in the top right hand corner of the roster page, we have this thing called student cards. And what's going to happen when I click on that, all of the students in my course will actually have their images expanded with their title, excuse me, with their names. If students set their preferred names, their preferred names appearing right underneath of their roster page. And like I said, I know this seems completely off the cuff of what we're discussing today, but this is actually a functionality not native to Canvas. It's what City Labs brought to the table, and it's something that faculty have really been excited about. And like I said, I hope you knew about this already, but if not, please feel free to go ahead and play around with that in some of your courses, especially as we get ready for the fall and summer two semesters. So like I had mentioned before, we talk about, we're talking about templates a lot, and we're gonna come back to the template discussion in a minute. But again, in our pretend example here today, kind of to model it after you getting ready for your fall semester, let's pretend we are in this blank Canvas course, we have not copied any content over from our previous semester, and let's go ahead and get our modules set up or our, mod our module structure set up for the semester. The third and final big functionality or tool that Design Plus brings to the table is this thing called the multi-tool. The way that we get to the multi-tool is we're going to go ahead and click on it on the left-hand side navigation pane. However, when we look here, I don't actually see it, and that's because I have not enabled it yet in this course. So similar to any type you're, anytime you're trying to rearrange these content pieces, the, excuse me, these links on the left-hand side, I'm going to go ahead and click on settings. and we'll go to the navigation tab in the ribbon. And if I scroll down a bit here, we see at the bottom, I have this thing called the multi-tool. So I'll go ahead and drag and drop that up a bit. And then remember to click on save. That way we have the multi-tool link now accessible. And there we have it. So let's go ahead and click on that. Within the multi-tool, we see we have these four different categories. Let's talk about them for a second. We have something called a template builder, a module builder, a due date modifier, as well as a delayed announcement modifier. Like we had said at the beginning, we at, we at Rider within the Teaching and Learning Center already have some pre-built templates for you. And that's why we went to those institutional templates before when we were copying it over. But what Design Plus allows you to do as well is you can actually create custom templates just for your particular course. So for example, say we had lab instructions that we always wanted to give before lab sessions. And that was kind of using the same headings, the same information, but we just had to tweak it each time. We could actually make a lab requirements template. Now we're not gonna discuss doing that today, but if you ever wanted to do that, all you would go ahead and do is click on the template builder and then page title, we'll call it the lab template and then create a template page. And this template would then be created in your, in your individual particular Canvas course. So let's go back home and let's talk about these other three. In particular, these middle two, module builder and due date modifier. If I open up the due date modifier, what's really neat about this, and we're not going to see too much here right now since there's no items here, but this is especially useful if we copied over a previous Canvas course and we actually wanted to be able to make all of our due date changes right within one page. So rather than going into all of our assignments and all of our discussion boards or quizzes one by one by one and change those dates around, everything would appear within one particular section and I could just change them on the fly. I'll come back to that due date modifier in a minute. That way we can see what that looks like once we have some pieces of content. But what we are going to talk about at a little bit more length today is this thing called the module builder. Let's go ahead and open that up. Now for a minute, I'm going to work, we're going to work off of the assumption that everybody is using modules as their 
structure within Canvas. That's not necessarily a requirement to use City Labs by any means, but it is something that we really strongly encourage you to do. And so if you're used to using modules in the past, you've probably noticed that you end up using the same structure in all of your modules. So whether that be you have a kind of overview page starts of the week, or maybe you always have a discussion board, um, a weekly quiz, kind of like a check-in quiz or something like that. We're going to show you how much quicker you can actually do all of that at the start of the semester. So if we look at new modules, we have this first topic that says new module pattern where we have this thing called a module prefix, the number of modules we want to create, as well as the starting number. And so when I look at module prefix, I have all of these different name schemas. In here, instead of maybe, maybe I don't call everything module one, module two, maybe I call them week one or week and week two or unit one, unit two, whatever naming schema you use, there's more than likely it's already gonna be populated here. But for our example, I'm gonna go ahead and stick with the module naming schema. So I'll click on module. And I wanna create, let's say 12 modules. Starting number means what number do you want Design Plus to go ahead and kick off with? What I have seen some people utilize in the past is say if they start with a start here module or like a getting started module, you can actually change this to module zero. I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it with module one. Okay, now let's talk about, well, what are we actually putting in our module content? So I know I like to use overview pages whenever I'm working with this. So we're gonna go ahead and start with a content page. I also know that there's always going to be a weekly assignment as well as a weekly discussion board. And in most of the weeks, I even do a kind of a weekly quiz. So I'll go ahead and click on quiz. I also like to kind of categorize items as well by my headers. So let's go ahead and add a header. Or I'm actually going to add two headers because I do these learning activities and I also do just PowerPoint uploads. And then I upload all the PowerPoints into the modules as well. So I'll add two headers. If we notice on the left-hand side, you might see a similar icon that you've noticed throughout Canvas, and that's these six little dots. Similar to how you can drag and drop and rearrange content within modules, I can actually rearrange them right here in our module builder. So I know I always have a header before my learning activities, and then I have a header at the bottom. I can name everything so it goes and creates it right away for me. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. But so let's say this is going to be module one overview, we always call it. I have my header here. I'm just going to call that learning activities. And then, whoa. And we'll have homework, discussion board. So gonna, we'll do a check-in quiz and then my PowerPoint slides. I can even do things like indent all of my content right within my modules if I'm doing any type of indenting before. And so say I want homework, discussion board, and check-in quiz to be always indented under the learning activities. If I hover over this little text box here, I see indent level and I can actually put them to indent level one right within here. I'm going a little bit more granular than we normally do. Right now, if you don't utilize modules or maybe you're not really utilizing them to their fullest extent, I know you might feel a little bit lost right now. That's okay, we're gonna bring you back in a second. But I do know that there's a few folks on, actually more than a few folks on the call today that are doing a lot with modules and they're very experienced with it. And so this looks probably very familiar to you. So I'm not quite done yet. I can actually even do more before I create all of my modules here within this module pattern. If I wanted to, like I mentioned before, I can actually pull in template pages right to a content page if I wanted to. And with anything that's gonna be an assignment, I could actually choose whether, what type of submission type it's gonna be. So like online, no submission or on paper. But I know all of the homeworks are gonna be online submissions. And all of them, for the most part, are going to be worth 10 points. 
So I'll go ahead and list it as 10 points and I can even choose how I'm gonna display my grade. So again, rather than go to all of my individual assignments and changing this, I can actually set all of these settings right away. So I show everything as points. So I'll go ahead and show that as points. And same thing with discussion board. Let's assume that our discussion board is gonna be graded as well. And this is also gonna be 10 points, so I'll put 10. And for whatever reason, hypothetically, say instead of it being shown as points, I want these to be shown as percentages, I could choose to show them as percentages. For our example, I'll keep them as points just for consistency. Okay, everything looks good. There's nothing to add underneath the PowerPoint slides since each module or each week it's gonna be different of the files that I'm uploading. So there's never gonna be consistency. Right now we're just building what's gonna be consistent. So I'll go ahead and leave that blank. And then I'm gonna click on this magic button here. And there is a wand on purpose because it truly really is magic. And then John, yes. we have a question about, can you show again how you added the points? Sure, uh, sure, Kathy. So let's say there were no points here for discussion board. Whenever discussion board or assignments get created, on the right hand side here, there's gonna be this blank text box that say PTS. So all we do is put our cursor there and put in the point value. And then I can choose whether or not to show it at points. If I'm doing a grading schema, I can do right to a letter grade even if I wanted to. And then anytime it's gonna be submission type, I can pick the default Canvas submission methods. I did see a question I think from Carrie before, can you do uh, submission methods for external methods. And while yes, you can still always do that within Canvas, you just can't set that for all of the assignments within the module builder. So hypothetically, say these homework, this homework title is actually gonna be a turn it in submission every semester, excuse me, every time. I'm just gonna leave it as blank for the time being. That way I know to go back and change it to say turn it in. Does that answer those two questions? Nodding heads will suffice. Perfect. Any other questions on the hierarchy that we just built before we go ahead and, and kind of really get the ball rolling on that? I'll give you a second. Okay, look good. So let's go ahead and jump back into this. Everything looks good to me here. I'm gonna double check. I like everything to be called modules. We'll do, go ahead and do 12 weeks starting with module one. I will go ahead and click on generate module list. And let's look and just see what just happened. So as I scroll down, I have module one, module one title, module two, title that I can add. By default, I'm gonna have this text called module two overview, module two learning activities, module two homework, discussion board, so on and so forth. For all of the modules, that I told that I told Design Plus to create, which was twelve. And look at that. But I can actually even do more right within this one page without having to go and do a lot more edits. So let's scroll back up to Module One at the top. And if we notice, we have some more these new uh, some more and some new text fields, text box fields here. So after module one, we have this thing called module title. So we can actually go ahead and name all of our modules right within this module builder. So let's just say this is our welcome week. Module two, you're most likely actually gonna have names for your modules. Maybe they're tailored after your chapters. So you could go ahead and add all of those for all of your weeks, module three, same deal, so on and so forth. But let's go ahead and stick on, let's just keep talking about module one for a minute. So if we notice, we have everything that we told Canvas to build. We have the overview, learning activities, assignment, discussion board, quiz, and PowerPoint slides. Say for that, that first week, I'm actually gonna ask students to do a little bit more and say that they have a maybe a hypothetical questionnaire that they have to fill out. And they also have two really small and simple learning activities that I need them to submit online in Canvas. What I can actually do right from this customized modules for module one, I can actually go ahead and add 
additional assignments, discussion boards, pages, quizzes, and headers. So like I said, let's say there's gonna be two more assignments for this week. I can click on the assignments button twice. So click once, click twice, and we see I just had two more assignments created. I can drag and drop them to be under my learning activities header like I did before. And for consistency, I'll go ahead and increase my indents. That way everything's indented the same way. Like I said, these are gonna be smaller assignments. So I'll go ahead and only give them five points. And these two I know are gonna be online. And maybe this is something that I want students like a quick questionnaire, anonymous questionnaire that I want them to fill out in class. I can actually set this as an on paper submission that way within the assignment within Canvas, like you've probably done before or experienced at some point, it doesn't actually allow students to submit anything online. It's gonna tell them that this is gonna be an on paper submission. And I show everything as a letter grade in our hypothetical example. Just like I can add items, I can also erase items for a particular week. So let's hypothetically say that our week six, I know that's gonna be my midterm week. So I'm not gonna have nearly the same amount of learning activities like I normally do. Instead, it's just gonna be the midterm. So I will go ahead and I'm actually gonna erase PowerPoint slides, the quiz and the discussion board right here. And to do that, all I have to do is click on the red X and it will remove it from the modules. Instead of this being homework, this is gonna be called midterm. And if I wanted to get really antsy and really specific, instead of it saying module six midterm, because there's only gonna be one midterm, by checking on and off this box here, and if I hover over it, I see this little tag that says include module information and name. What that essentially means, if I don't want to say module six midterm, because if we notice I can't actually erase that text, all I have to do is uncheck it, and just like that, it's gonna be called midterm. I'll change my midterm to be worth 50 points. And I know that they're gonna be submitting it online. So I'll go ahead and submit that, set that as an online submission. Any questions with what we just did with those two pieces of topics? We added additional pieces of content for a particular module and erased particular ones. If you wanna change the check-in quiz to be able to have a grade, which might be likely, can you change the quizzes to have grades? Um, So yes, Matthew, Canvas quizzes are always going to be graded by default with this. However, the point value you cannot actually set for quizzes because the way that Canvas quizzes works is the point value is going to be derived off of the questions. So for example, say I'm going to have five question quiz, but two points a piece. I have to create those two, um, the two points for each question. I know that seems a little bit confusing. I should, have, I should have covered that, but thank you for asking that question. Any other questions on adding particular pieces of content to a module or erasing it? Okay. So let's say I'm, I made all of my changes. I, I changed my module titles. I, if I wanted to add anything else to particular research or erase them, I went ahead and did that. If we scroll down to the bottom, I, we see I have two buttons here. I have this blue one that says add modules to course and then save progress. Because everything that we've been doing here right now has just been to get us getting started for the module. Yes, the grades will be automatically populated in the assignments module as well. Uh, good question. So say if this was a, learn, learn, a longer activity for you and you didn't want to go ahead and have everything done, I could just click on the save progress, but I'm ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and click on add modules to course. And if we notice on the right hand side here, we have some loading percentages and, and icons. So we'll go ahead and let that do its thing for a little bit. And since I create a lot of modules, it's taking a minute. You can leave this page if you wanted to, by the way, or if, say if you accidentally hit refresh or something, it will continue doing it. 
just because I like to play it a little bit safe with doing a live demo, I'm going to go ahead and let it do its thing. Has anybody utilized this function before? If you, if for those who knew about it, nodding heads no for most of you. Do you see, think it might be useful? Well, that's good. I like to see nodding heads, or at least for the most part. It definitely does save you a lot of that prep work in the beginning, which I really like. Okay. And we see it's refreshing and loading there as well. Move my floating heads around a bit here. And now we see in my existing module section has been added and I have all 12 of my modules here. And my first one, I, I gave it a title as well. So let's see what it looks like actually within the modules page. So I'll go ahead on the left-hand side and click on modules and take a look at that. All of my content has been created already for everything, for all of my weeks. And at this point, I could go around if I needed to make any more changes to particular pieces of content, I could go ahead once I'm ready, start publishing everything by publishing the individual modules as well as all the pieces of content and so on and so forth like you normally would. Let's go back into the multi-tool and let's take a look at something else that I talked about for a minute before, the due date modifier. Let's open that up. So now that we actually have assignments, we might, we'll actually be able to see something a little bit more useful. And since this is the first time I've reopened it, it'll take a second. And let's take a look at what we have here. I'm showing all of my assignments or anything that could possibly have a submission now right within my due date modifier section. At the top, I can do things like rearrange this long list by name, due date, available from, available to, show answers and hide answers. And so if I would like, I could actually set all of my due dates for every single one of my assignments right within this one screen where I could go and set the particular due date. I could set the particular time. If I wanted to, I could also use the, utilize the optional fields like the available from and the available until and dates. If I'm doing a quiz, I can also set the quiz due date as well. And I can also set the show answers and hide answers. And then just by clicking on update or at the top by clicking on the update all button, I could go ahead and publish every single one of my due dates automatically to all of my pages. So this is super helpful when you maybe have your syllabus right in front of you and you just want to go down the list and right off of your calendar that you have and set everything in one nice, easy to use place. Everything you do here will automatically get updated once you go ahead and click on update. You can even do things like filter what is being shown here. If I just want to show my published pieces of content, so we see only module one is showing up right now because this is the only topics that have been published. Same thing, I only want to see unpublished. I can also even do something like filter on graded versus ungraded. Questions on what we just covered with the due date modifier tool. <laughs> Glad you find it awesome. I, honestly, the multi-tool alone is all, it is unbelievable. Being able to create that module structure and hierarchy, the due dates on its own. Canvas actually announced that they're gonna uh, they're gonna be creating a tool like this. I think right now it's in the beta format where you can start changing all the pages. Excuse me, all the due dates. They are far away from having it ad, as advanced like this, um, and it actually looks eerily similar. So I'm pretty sure they're they're somewhat utilizing the same coding for this. So let's go back into our multi-tool and let's talk about the one last topic that's right here within the tool. And that's gonna be the delayed announcement modifier. And I do realize that we're nearing that hour mark, which is where we're trying to get the content wise and then open it up for when we can have everybody start unmuting and ask more specific questions. So we're just wrapping up, thanks for your patience. 
let's go ahead and delete announcement modifier. And while there's no announcements here, you'll at least be able to understand the concept that it's going to be the same thing as the due date modifier. If you are utilizing that delayed announcement function, you can set all of the dates for your announcements right here in the same place. If you copied over announcements from a particular, a previous course and you want to reuse them and just update the dates, you can do all of that right here within the multi-tool. Works really well. And so, excuse me. So at that point, that's gonna cover the topics that we wanted to address with you today as far as doing the blank demo on ourselves. So within the syllabus page alone, we discussed how you change those themes, excuse me, how you add and move the content blocks around. I'll actually go back to showing you how to change themes. I realized I forgot to do that. We had a teacher TA details. We worked with a lot more advanced things such as the new photo tool, as well as thing, adding things like accordions and tabs and changing them around. We discussed the how you do just basic editing in those content pages. So anytime you see where you have your cursor, you can go around and move it. You can go ahead and update that as well. And we talked about using the multi-tool. I'm always a fan of shameless plugs. So the last shameless plug I will just bring up is as a reminder, if you're not able to stick around for the next 25 minutes or so to ask questions, you are more than welcome to come to any of our drop-in sessions, Mondays and Wednesdays, as well as Tuesdays and Thursdays. We have the same timing schema. <clears throat> This is a lot of content we just covered. And like I said, there's a reason that we were doing it in this way, that way you can go back and have the recording up alongside of you and then go back to move on and play around with it yourself. Please don't get too frustrated as you maybe forgot how to do one thing or something that you're trying to tweak isn't working as well. Kind of like the 20 minute rule at most, we like you to utilize if you can't figure it out within those 20 minutes, please just come to the drop-in sessions and ask us, I promise you. It's not that big of a deal. We don't, we don't mind answering those same questions over and over with this type of content. It's hard. it's hard at first, or I shouldn't say hard. It's definitely overwhelming at first, but as you start to use it and get familiar with it, it's going to start becoming very natural to you. So with that, stop my share for a second. We will go ahead and allow you to unmute yourselves. And at this point, you can go ahead and start unmuting yourselves again and asking questions on the normal Zoom call. So um, I, have a, I, I don't know if this is a broad enough question for you to want to answer here. If not, I can always come to the drop-in sessions. But for something like one of these um, external programs, integrating it in, is it something that you could show us or is it uh, based, is it like uh, something that's different for each of those platforms? Yes and no, I guess, Carrie. So let's say we're using like my uh, Pearson MyLab. Mm -hmm. It's going to essentially be any type of times you're bringing those external LTIs. Unfortunately, we can't bring those external LTIs into the multi-tool builder. We would just create our module structures using the multi-tool and then go back to the classic add content and then external tool and add those pieces of content for those, for those third party functions. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. So I would still have to populate those individually. You would. Okay. Where you are able to utilize city labs with those third party tools is there's sometimes those, those third party tools will actually still have a place for the content <laughs> editing. And anytime we have those content editors and, 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 you know, as a reminder, it's anytime you see a text box in Canvas, that's the rich content editor. You can utilize all of the design plus functionality. So I know, I forget which, which publisher it is, they, but they have like this interactive piece at the bottom, but you still have that rich content at the top. You can still use City Labs for that. Okay. Good question. Hey, John. Oh. Sure. Uh, Larry. Yeah. Now I've already written my syllabus for fall. Okay. If I want to bring in the, the form that you had, is that going to overwrite what I have in there? Because what I want to do is cut and paste a lot into the other one, but I don't want to lose everything that I have. So unfortunately that is the one kind of downside when you're using a new template. If you're using the template for the first time and pulling it in, like I pulled this entire page in, it will erase anything you have there. So you really kind of have to have it side by side in those cases. 
The one thing I forgot to show you guys at the beginning, so I showed you how to pull in the template page, but this isn't the only kind of look and feel you can choose from. I'm gonna zoom out for a second. It doesn't matter if you can read it. I just want you to be able to see it. Design Tools has pre-built themes already for you to utilize. So if I didn't really like how, for whatever reason, or maybe if I'm teaching a lot of different classes and I'm a very visual person, and I need things to look slightly different just for my own sanity. Mm -hmm. Say if I don't want these headers to be here and looking like this, I can change the theme and I can change the theme at any given time. It doesn't actually erase any of the content. So there's two things. There's applying a template and changing a theme. Applying template will replace anything that you have while applying a new theme will update anything that you have. So let's go ahead and create content, create edit content. And this time, instead of doing copy existing content, we're going to go into choose a theme at which point I can just go ahead. I can hover over the different themes that are here. And what's unbelievably cool is as I'm hovering over it, I'm actually getting this little preview right here of what it looks like with my actual content. And so that's super cool, I think. Mm -hmm. And so this rounded headings is uh, okay. It kind of looks the same as well. And you can really have some fun with this. Oh, the circle left one apparently looks a lot different. And that's something I want to try. So when I click on circle, just like that, everything got updated for me. And so if I click on the update syllabus button, I can see what they look like that might have what my page looks like now. And so it's kind of same but different, right? It still looks like the generally the same type of thing that I was looking at before. It just has an updated look and feel to it. Sharon, were you about to ask a question too, or is that somebody else's voice I heard? Uh, I, I was trying. It's Kathy. Oh, Kathy, sorry. <laughs> no worries. So John, you know from seeing my Canvas pages that I have modules from previous semesters set up with this kind of structure, but without the design tools. So if I wanted to, <clears throat> could I import modules from a previous version of the class and then drag and drop the components into the new template that I'd select? While you can always drag and drop components into the new template, mm -hmm. just realize that regardless of what the structure is, if you want the content to be updated what, with what's called a framework, an HTML framework like this, you will have to recreate that the first time. So let's go into my modules for a minute and, and discuss what I mean there. So I have these overview pages here as an example. Say I already had an overview page created. I could go ahead and import that into this Canvas course and just rearrange it. Say module two overview is something that I copied over and rearrange it. So it's the one that's here. I'll unpublish the hypothetical old one and publish the new one. So I can still do all of that. But if I want the updated formatting, we would have to recreate it that first time around. That is the one kind of little finicky part but it just has to do with the way that the HTML framework works. You can't just apply something over it if it didn't already exist within the iframe. But you can still create this framework and then drag and drop your old stuff into it easily, right? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So you can pull in that new template and then on one side of your screen, have your, own, your old course and on the new one, the new one. And just by highlighting, copy, cut, paste, no problem at all. That's in fact, when we're helping, when we're working somebody to rebuild a course, that's something we do all the time. A tip and trick with that, that we utilize a lot is HTML. If you have, if you don't, if you have not kind of already found out the hard way on your own is very, very sensitive when you're doing things like cutting and pasting. So when we cut and paste over, we do something called paste without formatting. Other people I know will actually paste something to say like a basic text editing document. That way it has no formatting at all. It's a little bit different on everyone's browser or on everyone's computer. But if you are on say a Mac running Chrome, if you were to do command shift V and for most PCs running Chrome, it's the same as well. It would just be control shift V. You can paste into the new page without formatting. So Carrie, if you're going back and forth, that's how you would go about doing that. Same thing for you, Kathy. And I, that, that's one of those things that it's a little bit easier to do on a one-off 
one on one during the drop in sessions, but please feel free to ask us. So just a quick follow up question. I, I'm cool with experimenting and dropping in later with specific questions. What I'm just nervous about to start myself is if I if I select a template and I make 13 modules, mm -hmm. the, the design tools, can I import old modules from a previous class without overwriting that template and then be able to drag and drop stuff from the old modules into the new? Absolutely. Okay. Yes, you can. Perfect. Thank you. And when in doubt, and Kathy White, you will have no problem doing that, I promise you, but when in doubt, it never hurts to export your entire Canvas course and make a backup. Because <laughs> that is what we do whenever we're going to mess with somebody's course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. Other questions that are jumping out? I'm going to go ahead and stop. Oh, no, clearly you already stopped the recording for me. Thank you. It's still recording. Oh, it's not. I have a related question uh, uh, about importing. So you said that uh, it's always a good idea to make a backup copy. Uh, if I'm importing uh, from an existing old course, uh, that course would still be there, right? Yes. Uh, that course I don't need to back up. No, that, that, be... that's basically acting as your backup. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, another question is about that. that I noticed when you uh, try to uh, demo the uh, multi-tool and mm -hmm. uh, you couldn't find it, and then you went to setting and pulled it up from uh, a pool of some uh, functions there, or uh, I see a lot of stuff there as well. Are they, uh, are they all these things that available for us to pull up? We can always, if we need be. Do you mean within here or on no, that little slide? That right? setting. I know in setting when you, when you try to, uh, uh, to uh, show us the multi-tool, but you didn't find it on the left hand column, and then you went to the setting, and they put it up. You see here, yeah. Uh, this page? Yes I, I, yes, I think so. So is everything down there can be dragged up to the, um, you know. So it can. Um, the only thing that we have down here right now that's disabled are the textbook publisher integrations. So my lab and mastering is Pearson. Pearson Revel is also okay. Pearson. Um, I think my business course is also Pearson as well. McGraw-Hill and Cengage are two other publishers. So in order to utilize that functionality, you would have to be utilizing content from one of those publishers. Oh, okay, okay. I will say, I mean, I know at one point, everybody kind of used to poo-poo that. Some of the publishers have, have really come out with a lot, a, a lot better content before. Um, and while we're never necessarily advocating that you just kind of take a plug and play course from one of those publishers and that's your Canvas course, you might find that there's some activities um, in particular, I know Cengage has a couple of really cool ones, especially if you're teaching something like Microsoft Excel, <laughs> where it has the activities that integrate really nice within Canvas and can also integrate right, right within your Canvas textbook. That's totally unrelated to City Labs today, but just kind of a side note. Okay, thank you. Well, John, the only thing I was going to add there, because I learned this the hard way, <clears throat> is when you do drag those up from the bottom to the top um, and you activate them, you actually have to click the save button at the bottom. <laughs> Uh, yeah. That is yeah. our our, yeah. the, our least yeah. like feature yeah. of Canvas that you have to remember to do that. Yeah. Some, and something though, even yeah. though Querley and I teach it, you would be amazed how many times we forget to do that ourselves. <laughs> right here, um, right here, baby. <laughs> if you've already answered this, but if you've got an existing course in Canvas <clears throat> and you want to update it using this Design Plus and templates and stuff like that. Do you create the templates first and then import the course? Will that populate the with the new template or how do you go about that? So we actually have, like I mentioned, we have those pre-built templates, uh, individual pages you can pull in on a one to one basis. We also have an entire Canvas template or a Canvas shell where we can give you the entire kind of course that's done in the sense that you have all the assignments pages there. Um, but same thing though, Matthew, you, if you want to bring in old content, you have to either do that copy and paste functionality okay. or just not have the, the pretty formatting we call it for lack of better words, uh, embedded in there. Okay. Did, did that, did I understand your question? I right? think or so. Right? Yeah. Okay. I think, yeah. Sorry. 
So just out of curiosity, this is how you created the can. But like when I first started, I asked for the canvas shell to be set up for me. You did it using this. Yeah. Tool. Yeah. Okay. And John, am I right in thinking that because this is all new to me too, the multi tool? Can you effectively? It seems like you can effectively set up almost the entire course in in that tool, more or less. Although obviously you do Zoom and other things, but it seems like the multi tool can become the main. Unless I'm reading you wrong. I, I think we, when we first got City Labs, Corelli and I kind of tried to time it. Um, now, keeping in mind it was brand new to us, so we actually even got better at utilizing it. But I think if we, when, whenever we would build a blank course from the ground up just to get the structure, it would take about two hours. Right. If we kind of like really locked and loaded and focused, you can, I mean, I demoed doing 13 modules. The only thing I didn't do is rename everything. And I, you know, I want, I was explaining as much as I could what I was doing. You cut it down to five minutes tops. Um, on the multi-tool. Yeah, using the multi-tool. Yeah. Um, yeah. It truly, you can really, it's it's setting up the entire structure for the course right yeah. then and there. Through the multi-tool itself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because when you think about what takes the most amount of time, it's creating each one of those assignments, dragging and dropping it where you want it to be, and then setting the due dates is what is really, really time consuming. Well, especially um, when you're importing a course, you've got to do each of the dates individually. So that's a massive improvement, is that thing where you can do them all on the one page, brilliant. Absolutely. Really quick, <clears throat> again, as a reminder, so say I have my overview page, I want to pull in that template, just as a kind of tease for additional things that you can do within Design Plus that if we went through all of this, we would be here for hours and hours and hours today. But let's go ahead and I'm going to copy my overview page template here. I'm just going to kind of shout out some of the other tools that are here as well under the advanced that we did not have a chance to talk about. So we talked about the accordions and tabs. There's this thing called description list. This is great if you're doing a term, basically like a mini terms for the lesson or for say we're doing a lab session. So if I want to put this thing called a description list, Add description list that cursor and then I'll have my term and description and I can just keep adding items from then from there and there change the format very quickly if I want to do horizontal instead that's one module progression safe at the bottom of all my pages I want students to kind of see where they were in the current in the current module, I can insert kind of a progress bar at that bottom. Now I don't see anything here in the editor, but let's go ahead and click on save. And if I notice I'm on activity one of seven for this module. Nothing really, there's nothing necessarily fancy about that other than it's really adding a layer of professionalism to a course that maybe you're used to seeing in an online training. Since Can you we just are go to that drop down menu again, really quick, and sure. show the options of the pre created writer templates. Templates, yeah. Sure. So, like I said, we, we have an entire shell like you use carry that time, but individual pages. The one thing that's not here is the syllabus page because that's only going to show up on the syllabus, but we have discussion, home page, overview template, quiz template, and readings and lecture page. And John, you can add all of those templates into your own template, right? And then make 13 modules version. So you don't have to add, do, add yep. each one individually, right? Exactly. One last topic I'll cover here. That's an uh, advanced, definitely an advanced feature. And to be very clear, this does not impact your grade book, just to set the stage for that. It's this thing called a quick check. And what quick checks do, it's truly just something on a course content page to really essentially make sure students are still kind of paying attention or try and encourage them to actually go back and read the content. And what's cool about quick checks is it will actually inhibit students from progressing in their module until they answer it correctly. But like I said, there's nothing actually associated with the grade book and they get unlimited attempts. It's really just a cognitive check in for them, but it's still kind of cool. So let's say I want my quick check to be at the bottom here. So I'll go ahead and put my cursor here. 
And by going into my add advanced elements, I'll go ahead and add a quick check and then add it as a block at the bottom. At which point we'll see we have whatever my question text is, answer A and answer B. And then over here on the right hand side, I can actually go ahead and check off whatever one is the correct one. I see that that's updated with green. I'll go ahead and click on save. And now at the bottom, normally where I would have my next button, that's not here, but I'm able to either, until I actually have to proceed, I could click on the right one or the wrong, well, obviously not the wrong one, the right one, and then it's there. I really don't want to go down a rabbit hole too, too much with this. It's just kind of here. This is something if you want to learn more about, please feel free to come to the drop-in sessions. Can I ask a quick question about that? Sure. Um, students could get around it by going to modules and going to like page like two or three. I, yeah, like I said, it's really just, we don't normally cover it at all other than we're doing okay on time. <laughs> okay, thanks. Any other questions on what we just covered a lot of ground? And again, like I mentioned, if you don't know where to start, go ahead and start working on your syllabus. Today's drop-in sessions are what stays today, Wednesday. So it's going to be 2 to 3.30, right? Okay. John, can we you please show me, I'm sorry, uh, can you please show me one more time the progress bar? How can we import progress? Sure. Bar? So let's go ahead and I'll erase everything that I have here right now. I'll put my cursor, Ali, where I want that progress bar to show up. I'll go ahead and launch design pools if it's not already launched. Again, as a reminder, make sure you click that gearbox and make sure that you have advanced enabled because if you don't do that, almost everything we covered today will not be there. I'll go ahead to add advanced element. And then module progress slash navigation. And you actually have four different options. I'll go ahead and just stick with this first one because I tend to find that it's the cleanest one. Insert our cursor. We'll see that there's no information here right now because I'm editing the page. I'll go ahead and click on save. Sometimes you might either have to refresh the page, by the way, or kind of go back to modules and come into the page. But if I scroll down, I'm on number one of seven. Thanks. The module pro progress looks really nice and it adds a, a definitely an advanced layer to your course. And that is what this session truly is about, advanced formatting within Canvas, as well as some awesome functionality through the, through, through the multi-tool. All right, at this point, I'll go ahead and click the stop recording button.